Well folks, Old Man Winter is going to show his face a little sooner this year for us here in Ohio. It's uh, mid-November and we got about four and a half, five inches of snow this morning. So uh, I wanted to take this opportunity today and make this video on my basic procedures on setting up the observation hive for winter and getting it ready. So uh, we'll head on inside where it's a little warmer and I'll break it down for you. Okay, so we're inside at the observation hive. If the bees in the observation hive will not go into a, a hibernative state like the bees outside. They will begin to cluster, but just not as tightly as the bees outside. Where the bees outside, they are clustered very tightly at this point in time. Right now we are at 29 degrees outside. So, had 5 inches of snow today. Winter is here. So we'll go ahead and open it up now. Okay, now that we've got it open, you can see that my observation hive has three deep frames, which if you've seen any of my videos on this hive, you're already aware of this. But for those of you who have not, I've got three deep frames, and they're not double layered, it's just one layer. When you flip it over and look at the other side, you're going to see the other side of this frame, not the other side of another frame. So, uh, you can see how spread out the bees are for it being... 28, 29 degrees outside right now. Kind of a concentrated area right here, but that's because they're raising a little bit of brood. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, during the winter months, since I've only got these three deep frames, I will feed with my jar feeder here on top. I'll have to feed two to one sugar water, and I'll do that several times throughout the winter. They're able to take the sugar water, place it in the comb, and eat it just like they normally would. Where outside, you wouldn't be able to do that because the bees are not going to move because they are clustered. They can't get to the sugar water. So that's about how I, it works on the feeding. I would say it's going to be best to keep the observation hive in the coolest room of your house. That way the bees can still move around, but yet they know it's winter time. And that brings me to another point. My entrance here going outside my tubing I do not close this off I have a little gate right here I can push closed and I don't want to do it now because there's bees in there I can see them sitting right here but uh, I can push this closed and it would block this off but I do not do that I leave the, I leave this open that way the bees can feel that cool breeze come in and they know it's winter you know, otherwise you're blocking them in and they don't know, is it winter, is it summer? They, do, they don't know. So this is their way of knowing. It's winter time. We're supposed to be in slow-mo mode. Let's go over some of the important factors you're going to need to get your observation hive through winter if you want to set up an observation hive. You're going to want a good way to feed your bees, which i got a feeder here on top and I'll go over that. Okay, so up on top of the observation hive, I had two holes just like this here for a mason jar to sit down on top of. And the bees could come up and eat through the screen. This here does not work. It did not work for me. Maybe it's just because my screen's too flimsy. Um, but let's go over how I fixed it. And what I have done is took an entrance feeder. Over here I took me a little piece of cedar wood and I blocked off any way for the bees to get in or out. I screwed it down to the observation hive so it was not able to be removed. I notched the side for this piece of Luan to slide in and out. I think this is a butter bowl lid I used. I notched a little bit too much. But either way, how this works is you set the jar down on there, you open this up, I don't want to open it too far, but if I slide it just a little bit there, you can see how it would open. The bees can come right up in, get to the bottom of the jar, and they're able to eat. I'll watch the jar go down as they eat. Once it's all gone, I'll spray a little bit of Fisher Bee Quick on this sock. And I will uh, crack this over just a little bit, not enough that the bees can get out. 
our Vem place, the rag, or the sock, whichever, over that little crack, and I'll blow through it. And that'll force the Fisher Bee Quick fume down inside of this little compartment and force the bees to come back down inside the colony. So I'm able to push this back closed and remove this completely to refill it. Now the Fisher Bee Quick can be a little strong, so I don't want to overdo it. I just put just enough on there to push the bees back down into here. I don't want them to all flood down and leave, or completely leave this top frame. I just do a little bit and it pushes them back down in here, away from the feeder. So a good, a good feeder is very important for winter. You want to do something I didn't do, and I didn't set this up till fall of last year, and uh, I wasn't real sure if my feeder worked or not, and I learned during winter it didn't work the greatest, so I had to struggle with feeding all winter last year. It worked for me, but not like it's going to this year with this upgrade. You're also going to need a way to feed, whether it's just pieces of pollen patty, um, chunks, and I do not have this. I have a little system rigged up, and I don't know that it works the greatest. That needs to be improved. Um, you don't want to have to take your observation hive outside, open it to the cold elements just to stick in a piece of pollen patty. That's ridiculous. Um, so with that being said, let me show you what I am doing to feed pollen patties. I've got a little compartment here on the side, which is my thoughts were I, if I needed to install a queen I could just stick the cage in here and uh, it goes all the way into the observation hive. There's a little glass door here on the side and what I do is I uh, take a little bit of uh, Fisher's Bee Quick on a rag and I'll crack this open and I'll hold it here and the bees, which there's bees in there and all you're getting is reflection right now. Um, will actually back out of this area to where I can drop in a chunk of pollen patty right here. But I don't get a whole lot of bees down in this area because it's so far away from them. So with that being said, that needs to be improved. But there's a, the hole goes from here all the way through and you can kind of see the hole in there. Besides that, if you can do that and keep your observation hive in the coolest room would be best. That way they're not moving any more than they need to.